Hey guys, this is Hakobo coming at you with a video tutorial on Autodesk Toxic. Now, I am not an expert at this by any means. I've actually just started using it today, but I was noticing um, that there aren't very many Toxic tutorials out there. So I was just going to sort of do a general overview of kind of what I've learned with my one day using it and kind of talk about compositing apps if you're trying to decide which one to get and um, I've been using Shake for quite a while um, I've also used After Effects but I find Shake is a lot better um, for compositing images together if we're talking motion graphics maybe After Effects has more of an edge and I've used both professionally before and I definitely prefer Shake um, anyways but this one definitely has a lot of similarities to Shake. Um, in fact, um, under Preferences, um, under Creative, what I've done is the fill color is initially just set to black, which I really don't like. If you're not seeing all these options, you can click the Advance. Um, yeah, when it um, comes like that, it, um, yeah, it's set like that, and it can be really difficult to actually see what's behind it. Um, so you can change that color. Yeah, I just changed it to sort of a gray, something I was more familiar with, and that made it a lot easier to see, um, maybe a little darker, to see what was behind it. Um, so that's one of the customizable things. Um, and yeah, well, what I'm liking right away um, is with the middle mouse you can um, make it very customizable. So if you click up in your views tab, you can drop, um, uh, you just swipe over, and that's how I'm getting to that. You can swipe so you can have any of these anywhere, so you can grab a player and drop it there. Um, and then you have all these options. The one thing I'm not liking, but I kind of figured out some workarounds, is when you select something, it'll show it here, and then it'll show its things here, but you can't, like in Shake, you can't select them separately. So like what I would do a lot is like look at this blend and comp and then be moving around the transform, but when you've got this selected, all you can do is just go back to 2D transform and I'm sure in your workflow you realize that this is kind of annoying um, and yeah I looked up all these tutorials and I never really found a way around that um, the one thing that can be really helpful well, if you go over your player and go to player options, you can either do the tool input, kind of what's going in, or the composition output is like what's showing at the very end. There's there's those three, but the workaround that I got to work somewhat well for me was um, if you hold down the one, two, three, or four um, while you click something, it'll assign it to those numbers. And then when you hit one, you go to that. When you hit two, you go to that. So that's kind of what I did because then, um, and that's why it's nice to have two viewing windows. Um, down here, you can kind of change how it's set up. Um, and yeah, I have my pick licks here um, set to compositing because I use blend and comp, which um, I feel like it's going to be used most of the time. Um, and your 2D transform, which is also pretty important, and you can define the um, with your output to find the height and the width. Um, so yeah, that's kind of annoying, and it requires multiple windows, and doesn't work exactly like I want. But using the one, two, three, four makes it a bit more flexible, um, and that's kind of a way to get this to stick. That will let you look at whatever you want to look at and also be messing with these but it would have been really nice to be able to select that so so maybe there's something I'm just not aware of as far as that anyway it's kind of um, somewhat confusing but I'm
getting more used to. It's kind of nice that there's compositing kind of built in here. You can mess with the opacity of one layer. Um, that's what I'm kind of liking is it seems like there's a lot within these nodes. But um, you can create um, garbage mass um, by hitting that. You can also access it from, you know, the, the pick list or anything like that. Um, garbage mask um, and I kinda like these options and I like how they're all laid out here it's easier to um, work with them and I think this tool could be interesting because you can kind of draw a shape and then it makes it based upon that which I think is pretty cool and then you can go and edit them um, if you draw too slow it'll create a million points um, and then I believe if you if you hold down command then you can mess with the edge um, it's also nice that they have this is something that rotate all the points that's really nice and then you can create other ones um, if you hold down command it'll smooth it um, and then um, holding option will add in another point or delete a point um, and then yeah if you click command on a point it'll make it curved or not curved um, and then if you hold um, command again it'll um, make it moving both sides or just one side like that which is definitely nice so yeah, command on this moves it out. Command on a point is going to make it uh, curvy or not curvy. Option over um, a line, get rid of it. Um, you can also be right clicking to access things within Toxic. Um, that can be another quicker way to begin to navigate around. But yeah, you can see. Um, if you want, you can also set this up. Um, it's fairly customizable, so you can um, get used to. You can do a top-down view as well, and that's more something you'd see in Shake. I'm trying to get used to the left or right because it seems like it's organized fairly well, but that is customizable. Um, so yeah, uh, just finishing up, uh, if you're kind of looking at software programs, I um, wanted to talk a little bit about that, because, I mean, I know Nuke is a big thing, and I was definitely considering getting that, um, and I was trying to decide if I just wanted to stick with Shake, um, so I ended up deciding on Toxic, um, and the main reason is just because it's included with Maya and 3D Max. Um, which makes it really cheap, especially if you if you already have something like that. I think it's somewhat hard to make the case to shell out three thousand five hundred for the regular or six thousand for the advance for Nuke, just because you know that costs as much as Maya the whole suite. And so since I have Maya, um, I think it's a really cool tool, and you know I'm still used to shakes so kind of adjusting to that but I, I think there is potential I've seen definitely good work done with it I think it's green screen keyer is really advanced and I think it's tracker is fairly easy to use and fairly advanced um, it's pretty customizable I'm still trying to figure out the loading in the attributes because that's really really annoying but um, it is kind of nice that you can set views anyways I'm gonna try to get, do more in depth and more advanced tutorials once I get better at that but I thought since there's so few toxic tutorials I'd just talk about some of the tips and techniques I've learned just from getting started and I will follow up with a bunch more tutorials once I get better alright this is Jacobo signing out